Hello everybody, and welcome back to another Roblox Studio Tutorial. Now, today is the day. Today is the day I am going to be doing my official How to Rig a VS2 Chassis Tutorial. Now, I'm sure you guys are wondering, why am I doing the tutorial even though I said I wouldn't? Well, the short answer is, a lot of you people have been telling me that the WH10 tutorial that I've recommended to you all doesn't really work. I don't know why, like, I watched it and it seems fine to me, but admittedly it is a four-year-old video, so Roblox Studio may have changed a bit since then? Actually, it's changed a lot since then, and I can't imagine the physics also changed, so yeah, I decided I'm gonna make a totally up-to-date tutorial. Now, this tutorial, if you guys are using it, will work on my rigging of um, Valve Gear tutorial, Stevenson's, and it should work with the rest of my other tutorials, since this is how I rig stuff. So, um, yeah. To show you guys what I mean, we have the uh, classic um, double fairly Merlin's Merlin chassis. It's the double fairly chassis that I've overused for my other tutorials. So um, yeah, let's first get started. So first thing you got, first thing I'm gonna do is show you how this works. So if I just pop into play here, I will load up the sa oh, There we go. We load it up. Let me just uh, fix my camera real quickly. Nope. Yep, if I could, which I can't, so we're just gonna do it like this. There we go. As you guys can see. It smooths down. It spins, yeah. Like how an engine should. So, we're gonna stop that, and I'm gonna show you guys how you can make turn this mess into this. So, if you guys are following along, first you're gonna wanna download this uh, test chassis in the link, descri link, link down below, which should be, um, yeah. I suggest doing this for any of your stuff. I don't suggest using this, however, for any lo locomotion buildings. This is only for a double fairly, and... I don't really want to see you guys putting this onto a locomotive. I mean, like, I'll say this much: if you can, like, I'll say this much: you can put it if you can get this working. If you modify it, I guess I'm okay as long as you give me credit for this. But I would highly suggest this building your own because this is only made specifically for Merlin. I don't think it would work for any other double fairly. I'd probably just look off. But besides that, what you're first going to want to start doing is you're going to first going to want to ungroup this model. This basically ungroups everything into their respective, uh, yeah, ungroups, whatever, yeah. Now, what you're going to want to do next is take this back axle, and I want you to highlight the entire thing and press Control G or Command G on your keyboard, or if you want, you could just right click it and press Group as Model. So, let's group as Model. Perfect. This is going to be our rear axle. Now, if you want, you can name this Rear Axle. I want you to do the same thing for the front axle as well. Here, let me just. Yeah, sorry. Sometimes this happens that I click on- Oh yeah, this is also another thing. Rear axle. If you ever click on a model and you notice that the uh, this guy moves, I- This is only really, you know, precise if you like doing precise modeling, and it doesn't happen that often, but it might move it over by just a few tiny little middle studs, and that can kind of mess up things in the long run, so I suggest that you just press Control c Command-C, or I guess- is there an undo button? I don't know if there's an undo button or not. Oh, yeah, this is the undo button. You can press one of those to basically undo it to the previous step, which will realign it. So, as I was saying, I want you to grab the group the front axle as well. We'll name that front axle. Once you have these two axles grouped, you're going to want to click on this union here, or this thing, which we have a collider. A collider is essentially a Roblox cylinder that's invisible and has collision because axles, generally speaking, well, axles shouldn't have collision. The only thing that should have collisions is the collider because the colliders are the thing that, um, well, basically collides with the ground. That's essentially what their point is. They allow the locomotive to run on max, to run on wheel, to run on the tracks, like the physics. So, I see you don't have to name them collider, but what you do need to make sure to do is that to make sure they're actually parts. You can't use unions, because if you were to use a union, it would basically mess everything up and cause it kind of wonky. If you don't know, if you can't scale a part correctly, I have another solution for you. What you can do is you can first duplicate this wheel, bring it out like so, separate it, just make sure to select this part, then you can delete the rest of this, take this part, separate it, then just negate, and you've basically got your collider. Because the collider should inf should basically it should be it should be bigger at the size same size as the wheel, but not this it basically. What I'm trying to say here is that the collider should not be the entire white wheel size. It should only be the size up to the flange. You do not want to make your collider bigger than the flange unless your locomotive has no flanges, in which case you can basically just use the entire size of the wheel. So now that you got that out of the way, you're going to want to take one of your colliders. I'll take this one. You want to duplicate it and you want to align it to the middle of the wheel. I can pull up the align tool here. Press X, press Active Object, Align. Once there, you're going to want to rename this from Collider to Wheel. 
And you're also going to want to go into your properties and press the can collide group off. Once that is done, you're going to want to do the same thing for this other side. So let me just do this very quickly, like so. Wheel. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's spelled incorrectly or not. Doesn't. Script won't care. So once you have those can collide, collide turned off, you're gonna gonna gonna, gonna go to this model, the vehicle C2 train, which I'll also have linked down in the description. You wanna go to a wheel. You wanna go to here. And you wanna grab this VS2 attachment motor. Now you don't want to grab the VS2 attachment bogey as that is only made for diesels and fairlies and anything that has a bogey. You want to grab the VS2 attachment motor. Make sure to remember that now. Next, you're going to want to select these two wheels. You want to right-click it and press Paste into Selected. You can also turn on Constraint Details. Now, the reason why these guys are offset is because for some reason in this model, they're offset. I don't actually know why. To fix that, you just have to go to the position here, press 0, and boom, they're reset. Now, an important thing, you always want to make sure the yellow arrow is horizontal. The orange, because this is the basically this is the direction that the wheel is going to be spinning. If it's vertical, then the wheel might get flipped like 90 degrees or so, or it won't work in general. So make sure your yellow arrows are horizontal. Once you've got that completed, I'm going to want you now to group all the rods together. So we can group this guy, this guy, this guy, like so. Make sure that it's grouped, everything. Yep. This guy, this guy, and at last, this guy. Once you've got all that grouped, you're going to want to take these mod parts and bring them into the model. Now make sure you're using the one stud increment to make sure that everything's aligned properly. Make sure to align all these by one stud, so we can just do like this, this, this. Make sure to do it here as well. And uh, if you're also, this this video will also talk about quartering. I know my last Stevenson's video talked about quartering, but I decided that if I'm going to make an entire video on how to rig a VS2 chassis with rods, I might, well, might as well just include how to do the rods as well. So make sure that everything here is properly set up. Quartering should basically be, um, if you're looking at a clock face, head on, it should have, this side should be at 9 o'clock, this side should be at 12 o'clock. I think that should be pretty, it's basically a 90 degree angle since wheels 360. So, once you've got all, that all completed, you're going to want to select the entire model and group it again, and this will basically be your chassis. Now, I've seen some people basically make the chassis and the body different, different like groups. I personally make sure to keep them all in the same group because I've noticed that the moving parts they can be, if as long as they're on in their own separate individual group and aren't welded of anything, they will work fine. Like there'll be no issue. In fact, they'll make stuff like deleting stuff like the local one is easier. So once you have all that completed, you're now going to want to go over to the VS2 C vehicle C2 train, select all these parts, including this exclude this vehicle C configuration and this well not S A handle. Well, do you want A handle? Well, oh, yeah, select this A handle. Now copy that, and what you want to do is you want to make sure you select all of this at once. Do not select the vehicle seat and the vehicle seat configuration separately and copy them in individually. You have to copy them at the same time because the vehicle seat to, conf to configuration script or folder is linked directly to the seat. If you copy them in individually, it won't recognize the seat and you'll have to rename it so it recognizes this seat here. By just copying them all at the same time, it alleviates that problem and everything works well. So, you take the model, you press paste in two, and you got all your stuff here. The, um, you can just move the um, A handle down there, you can turn it to one, and it doesn't actually matter where it's located, it will be fine either way. Now what you can do is you can now, oh, before you do that, here's, a, here's another important fact. Make sure everything in your model does not have collision, except for the gliders. The gliders are like the, the only thing that are allowed to have collision. Everything else in the model, besides the colliders and the gliders, must not have collision. The reason for this is because if they have collision, a lot of bad stuff happens. The model will not work properly, it will glitch out, it'll crash, maybe not crash, but it'll glitch out. It'll basically just be, just be a very annoying time. It might even cause them, it, in the best case scenarios, it'll cause the model to have significant running issues. Worst case scenario, it sends you to the sun. So make sure you have collision turned off for everything, except the colliders and gliders. Now, once you've got all that, that all set up, we can go into test mode and we can try it out to see if it works. Alright, let's pop it over here. And as you can see, the wheels spin perfectly. But we're not done just yet. Next, we're going to be getting on to the rods. So, for the rods, what you're first going to want to do is you're going to want to select this part here. 
Then, as you can see, this already has a hinge constraint, so we can delete that. You're going to want to press this plus button here, and you want to search up attachment. Once you've searched it up, something I personally do, but you don't have to do, well, it depends. I've noticed this might affect the model, but you want to make sure that the yellow arrow is... Actually, this is an important thing. Make sure the yellow arrow is facing the same direction for both sides. As in the case for here, the uh, VS2 attachment is just facing that direction, so I'm going to have the yellow arrow facing that direction. You don't want to have them face individual sides. I don't know if it affects the model significantly, but I've noticed that with any model that I try to fix, if the arrows are facing individual sides, it causes the model just fall apart, so do not do that. Now what you're going to next want to do is... Also, this the uh, test model should not have any of these hinges. If they do, just delete them. You're going to... Excuse me, sorry again. You're going to want to rotate it like so, and you basically got the hinges. Now, you're also going to want to add hinges to this part as well, so we just added hinges. You can duplicate these hinges if you want, and something I do suggest doing is not that scale, but you can basically bring them up like so, turn them around, turn them up, and boom, there we go. You also might want to extend the hinges like so, so now we have it, so here's what we have right now. We have this part, it has two attachments in it. Each attachment goes to an individual rod. So if we take this rod, we could create an attachment, a hinge attachment or hinge constraint to this guy. Now this rod is connected to this hinge here. However, you're gonna want to make sure that you copy the position of this, of these, um, of this world C frame, or I guess these positions, paste it into this attachment's positions. If this is a bit too confusing for you, I would recommend going and watching my Stevenson's video. I go in a bit more depth in it, but basically just do this a bunch for all the uh, rods here so we do it for like here attachments delete that hinge there you rotate it around like so then we go into this part here attachment like so ba -da -ba -da -ba. then we take this part create a hinge copy like so and boom, there we go. Now we have a, a coupling rod that is now fully rigged. So when this model will run, this coupling rod will spin. I will do the rest, I'll do the same for the rest of this. So let me just take this guy. Attachment, rotate you like so. Then we take, I think we'll just, also another thing I do suggest you do if you want, I suggest taking this model and pulling it out by so. If you pull it out by one stud, everything should be fine, there'll be no issues. But this actually does help a lot if you have like a, um, the hinges, like the attachments just close. So what you can do here in this case is you can take this hinge, connect it like so. Actually, no, I would suggest connecting it like here and here. It honestly depends, but I do, what I've noticed is that you have, is having the hinge on the rod instead of the wheel itself, generally speaking, causes less issues, at least that's how I do it. I don't know if it causes issue, if it, if it's, you know, works either way, but that's what I suggest. So once you do that, you can then take the, um, coordinates of this guy, paste it in like so, boom, this guy here, and now for the most important part, the piston. For the piston, you're going to want to, A, select this guy, put the attachment in like we do normally, but you're going to want to make sure the yellow arrow is facing this direction, not this direction. The reason why is that a prismatic is basically like, essentially it's like a constraint that allows this rod here to move like this, like how a piston normally would, instead of how it's moving normally, which is spinning around. Now, you're going to want to put another constraint in this union here. I don't suggest using a union, I suggest it being a cylinder, like just a Roblox CSG cylinder. However, in this case, this is already a perfect cylinder with just a hole in it, so it's not going to matter too much, not going to have any problems. Select this attachment here, and make sure you select this attachment only. Take the prismatic, and connect it here like so. This will, this will basically allow the thing to basically push in and out, and will cause it, it's basically like a slide. I don't know what word you might use, like maybe a slide valve, it's basically like a slide valve basically, it even says prismatic slider axis, basically allows it to slide in and out. So I'm gonna read, so I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna do the other side and then we'll test it and we'll see how it goes. Oh yes, another thing I forgot to mention, if your rods are quartered like how they are here, you can either, if, if you haven't modeled your rods to be quartered and you're basically just copying them over by here, don't worry about this whole thing, just make sure, it, oh, actually, I'll explain it when we get there, actually, I can explain it right now. So, for rod situations like these, what you want to do is essentially, 
you know, let me first delete that. You're going to take this part, you're going to attach the, put the attachment in like you would normally would. However, instead of just, ex excuse me again, wow, okay, I just ate a lot of food, so sorry about that. So what you're going to want to do is that instead of in this case of just copying the um, attachment position here, you're actually going to want to go open up this little arrow and check the X, Y, and Z coordinates. In this case, we're going to want to look for the, let's see. I hear, for, for an easy suggestion, I suggest pressing 1. It'll basically show its direction. In this case, we are looking for the x-coordinate of this guy. So, we're going to, or actually going to look for the x-coordinate of this guy, the paste into this guy. What you can do, you can copy this. You then go to this model, this attachment. You paste in like so, and the attachment gets all aligned like so. So, it essentially means that now when it snaps, it'll snap into this position and be perfectly aligned like it would on this side, despite the fact it is not properly quartered, like model, like curly is. But... You'll see what happens when it snaps into it. Okay, back to the timeline. And that's it. We've rigged both sides. Now, let's go into test mode and see if it works. Alright, we're here now. Pop it up. One second. Uh, oh, first things first. As you can see, these rods snapped into place like they're supposed to. That's basically what I meant. Like, if you don't if you don't need to quarter them how they are on exactly the other side, you can just set them up like this. And if we test that the model, both rod sides work absolutely perfectly. And this model is now ready to go on your railway. Or, I guess, railroad. Whatever the case, it's working. Well, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope it was informative enough. I'm sorry if my voice was a bit fast. This is actually the second take of this that I took a few, like a week or two after the first one because I realized in the first one I should have included the rods and I didn't and I was kind of annoyed that I didn't. So I finally decided to take the time tonight and finally do this video. So yeah, um, make sure to like and subscribe. Um, tell me in the comments if this helped you or not. And if you have any more questions, ask me in the comments. I may not answer them all or I may be like... I don't, it may be kind of like, here's something I will say though, if the question that you have, it can be answered in one of the two videos, I will direct you to the video, I might direct you to like a section of the link. I also will not be including the rigged version in the um, test and like the unrigged chassis, example chassis, because I don't want you guys to just immediately download it and just be able to get a free running chassis with it. I want you guys to learn how to rig this stuff, because from my experience, if you teach someone to rig, it's like it's like the fishing metaphor. So, you know, like feed a fish for a person to eat for a day, teach them how to fish, they can feed themselves forever. It's basically like that. I want to show you guys how you can build your own stuff, how to get it all working, so that way you can A, don't have to ask people for help because, in all honesty, while a lot of us are willing to help, it does after a while get a bit annoying. And second of all, it means you guys can teach your friends. Say, for example, one of your friends is having issues with their train, you can be like, oh, well, I did it like this, and um, you can just show them how it rigs. Basically, just help people learn more and get us more involved, like, you know, get the community more active in figuring it out. Well, besides all those notes, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you have a good night. I'll see you all later.